I'm not going to claim to have found the silver bullet for your anxiety, but this might help a little. Well, hey guys, what is up? It is so good to be back with you here today making another video. And I have to say, when I originally planned the video for today, it wasn't this one. So let me give you a little backstory to how this video came about. This morning, I was doing my quiet time as I do every morning. I was reading the book of Psalms, which has just been very life-giving for me. And I've been spending a lot of time this year in the book of Psalms. If you need somewhere to do your Bible study, try it. I think you'll really enjoy it, but that's not the point. Anyway, I was in the book of Psalms and I read this beautiful Psalm this morning, Psalm 131. If you're not familiar with it, let me just read a little bit of it to you. It says, O oh Lord, my heart is not lifted up. My eyes are not raised too high. I do not occupy myself with things too great and too marvelous for me. But here it is. But I have calmed and quieted my soul. I just thought what a beautiful picture that is and what a needed thing that is in our time to have a calm and quiet soul. And instantly that put in my head a thought of something that I hadn't even thought to make a YouTube video on previously, but I think would be really helpful for you. And that is the idea of breath prayers. In this season of increased anxiety and just so much going on in the world. I've heard a lot of people talking about these, but I haven't seen a ton of YouTube videos on them, though I'm sure good YouTube videos exist on this. But I wanted to talk to you about breath prayers because I know for many people, this might be something a little unfamiliar for you. And at first you might even be tempted if you grew up in environments like me to say, whoa, like this seems too mystical. This seems too weird. This is a little like new age, like just hang in there. It's really not, it is an ancient Christian practice that I assure you isn't really that weird at all, but I really think it has a wonderful effect for anxiety. I've used it in my own life and I just, I love to start the day this way. I love to end it this way. I love to just sneak this into my day in different places. It's such a beautiful way to pray and I think you could really enjoy it. So just so you know where we're going, here you have it. Today, I'm going to give you a little background on what is a breath prayer and where do they come from? Then we're gonna talk a little bit about why you should try it and how you can try it. And then at the end, I'm gonna give you an opportunity. I'll put a little just nice relaxing music and you can try it for yourself, like two minutes tops. It's not that weird and you might really enjoy it. So I hope you stick around till the end and give it a try. So first, what is a breath prayer exactly? Well, luckily the answer to that is really simple. It's a very, very simple, basic practice, but that has wonderful, wonderful effects. And so basically the idea is that you take a phrase often from scripture and you break it into two parts and you inhale and you think of the one phrase and then you exhale and you think of the other phrase. Now, the most common phrase associated with this is called the Jesus prayer. And it goes like inhale, Lord Jesus, son of God, exhale, have mercy on me, a sinner. Or in more abbreviated forms, Lord Jesus, have mercy, or Jesus, mercy. Different ways of dividing it up, but you get the basic idea. You inhale, and you can think of a passage of scripture, one line, and then you exhale. And it has this beautiful, calming effect. So where exactly does this come from? Because that does matter when we're thinking about spiritual practices. We don't want to just adopt any spiritual discipline in your life. I want you to be discerning about these things. So where exactly does this come from? Well, it has a very long history in the Christian tradition. As I mentioned earlier, it goes all the way back to the desert fathers and mothers of the fifth century. And they were an ascetic monastic group, which if you're like, okay, let's use smaller words. I know that was a little pretentious. Ascetic just means that they put themselves away from worldly pleasures, that they deprived themselves of nice things and they were real minimalists, all that, you know, kind of trendy, but way before it was cool. And they lived out in the desert and they were monks, which is what it means to be monastic. And so it goes all the way back to them and John Chrysostom writes about it, an uh, early church father. And then it picks up some steam when it gets fused with the Jesus prayer that also goes really far back. But it really has a great history in the Eastern Orthodox tradition and really gets a boom in around the 1300s with hesychasm. And you're like, okay, I'm done with the history lesson. We're almost done too. Hesychasm was basically another monastic practice that came out and it comes from 1 Thessalonians 4.11 because the Greek word for hesychasm is also used there where it says to lead a quiet life and that to lead a quiet life is hesychasian, which is a Greek word 
for, well, leading a quiet life. And they also fuse it with Jesus's teaching in the book of Matthew, where he says to go into your prayer closet and pray in secret. But they take that to mean pray inwardly. And it gets a little weird there, but we don't have to worry about that too much. But main point, it goes really far back and it's related with some pretty good names like John Chrysostom. All right, but really for the important question, why should you do this? And I know for many evangelicals, like I'm guessing you might be if you watch my videos and myself included that, Things like this, they, they seem a little ritualistic. They seem so rooted in tradition that we often don't interact with. And it just seems like almost overly formal. Like I just have a conversation with God, that's prayer. And that's lovely, but there's many ways to pray. And I think this is a way that we can really live out the scriptural call to pray without ceasing, which comes from Paul in 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, which is this crazy call. Like how am I to pray without ceasing? What if praying was as simple as breathing. And I know you're not always going to be doing this, but it's such an accessible way to pray. It's also a really great way to live out the biblical mandate to meditate on scripture. In Psalm 1, we see the picture of the blessed man who meditates on scripture. And then in Joshua 1.8, we also have this picture where he is called to meditate on scripture day and night. And I know for us, we often don't associate Christianity with words like meditation. That seems very Eastern and we, we're not really into that, but it, it's in the text. And while there are very many differences between just emptying your mind and filling your mind with scripture, which is the biblical picture of meditation, there is a call to do that, to fill our minds with scripture. As Colossians says, we want to let the word of Christ dwell richly in us, which we talk about all the time. And this is a powerful, powerful way to really begin to internalize scripture and allow it to work in you in ways that you haven't previously allowed it. And so how can you do it? Well, it's really simple. Like I showed you, it can be as simple as Lord Jesus, have mercy on me, which if you're wondering where that comes from, that's actually an amalgamation of a couple verses. And it comes from Jesus parable of the publican or the tax collector and his way of praying in Luke chapter 18, verse 11 specifically. And then other texts that just claim Jesus is Lord, like in Philippians. But there's many other passages you could pick as well to pray. And that would be my encouragement to you. Mix it up, pick different passages and do that. And when you feel yourself feeling anxious, when you feel worried, when you feel anxiety, just give yourself a second to... And we know from science, and look, I didn't wanna get into this in the why section because frankly, I am not the guy to come to with science questions, but we do know that there are incredible benefits of deep breathing. And why not incorporate that into our spiritual lives, into our walk with Jesus? So take a verse, and it could be any verse. It's great to look at the context and understand the verse, but give it a try. You could pick any number of verses. You could try Psalm 23 and you could go, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Or you could go to Proverbs and you could say, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. You could try any number of things and I want you to mix it up, try different ones, see what works for you. But I think this could really encourage you. I think this could be really, really healthy for you. I've really enjoyed doing it myself and I wanna challenge you, give it a try. This might feel different, this might feel weird, you might hate it, you don't have to do it. But I think, I think it could really be wonderful for you. I think it could allow you to meditate on scripture. I think it could allow you to pray without ceasing. I think it could allow you to set your mind on things above, not on what is of the earth. That would be a great one to pray. Set your mind on things above, not what is on the earth. There are so many options and it's such a healthy, wonderful practice. I really encourage you to give it a go. So now I'm going to just blink a little music and give you two minutes to give it a try. I really encourage you, you've made it this far, you may as well do it. It's just two minutes, see what you think. And it's always better with a little nice music. Now, give it a try. I'd recommend closing your eyes, focus on your breath, calm your mind, inhale your first phrase, and exhale your second. You've got this.
Well, if you're still listening, you did it. Congratulations. And before you go, I just want to say thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it is life-giving to you. I hope it is something that is spiritually nourishing. I hope that it encourages you and allows you to continue growing in your faith. If you're new to this channel, this is Gospel Simplicity, and we're passionate about the beautiful simplicity and transformative power of the gospel, the good news about Jesus, the best news the world has ever heard. We talk about life, Jesus, and the journey of faith in a real, honest, and open way. So if that at all interests you, I'd encourage you to hit subscribe down below to become a part of what we're doing. And to all of you that have already subscribed, to those of you that have been commenting, liking, sharing these videos with your friends that you think would enjoy them, you guys are the best. Thank you so much. Until next time, guys, be sure to be on the lookout for more videos. And as always, go out and love God and love others, because truly, above all else, that will change the world. Peace. Love you guys so much. I'll see you next time.